What's going on Mass Effect fans? Archie here with my review of Mass Effect Andromeda. Also, spoilers, duh, but minus spoilers, nothing, nothing crazy in the series. To kick things off, let's talk about the character creation. Character creation in Mass Effect Andromeda is probably the most limited character system by Bioware. It seems like you can't really customize too much and there's a lot of limitations to what you can do. Just pick a preset and change out some, some colors, some, you know, maybe make your nose smaller, and that's basically it. There's limited hairstyles, limited facial hair, and even the presets themselves are limited. It's not a, a, as extensive as previous Bioware titles where there's a lot more options to go through. And that's kind of disappointing because, you know, it's an RPG you want to be able to create as much as you possibly can, and it's also a Bioware game where usually there's a lot of creativity and a lot of things you can do when it comes to creating a character. That's what you've seen in past Mass Effect games and even Dragon Age, a lot of weird, like, customizable, like, looks because, you know, there are so much options for you to, to do. Here, it's very limited, so it's a lot more of a chance for people to have characters that look pretty similar to each other. The way power selection works in this game is a bit different than previous Mass Effect games. Previous games, you you know select the soldier or vanguard, engineer, etc., 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 all in a character creation system. However, in this one, you don't really pick one set power. Like there's you can you you can pick like a background like uh, your biotic or a leader or a recon specialist, you know, things like that. You can pick like a personality background. But you don't pick a, a set power. The game allows you to go across the spectrum when it comes to you know how your character plays, how your character builds. The option is all up to you. You get to make your character how you want to make your character. You know, I selected to play as an operative, you know, because the description is kind of like a, like a role character, but it's also similar to that of a of a soldier, which is usually what I, what I pick for my main character playthrough in Mass Effect games. I play as a soldier. It's pretty simple. But in this game, even though I picked to be an operative. I can build him to be, you know, all across the board. I can make him biotic if I want to, make him a soldier if I want to, make him a tech if I want to. I can make him both biotic and tech. I can make him both biotic and soldier or tech and soldier. And, you know, if you do, like, all three biotic, soldier, and tech, then you just plan as, like, an explorer kind of background. And this is a great thing. You know, it's kind of similar to how Dark Souls does builds, where you can select a major thing in the game, but you can build that character to be a warrior if you want to throughout the rest of the game. So it's a great new thing that they did with that. And I hope that every future Mass Effect game does the same thing. Maybe even take it into Dragon Age where, you know, you, you, can, you can just pick your personality and then you, the kind of character you play as instead of going rogue or warrior, mage, whatever. You just build your character how you want to build them and you just, you know, grow up throughout the game. The atmosphere of this game is amazing. At first, it makes it, it makes it seem like you know you're just another person among tens of thousands that took part in a voyage of an unknown risk and result. Then it, it circles you with you know uncertainty, then importance. You know you, you feel the, the immersion through the atmosphere of this game. Graphically, the game looks like Dragon's Inquisition, which looks great, but a tad more darker colors, which Mass Effect has always had darker colors in Dragon Age. You know it's a visually stunning game. The landscape of the map, the traveling, and the nomad, even the simple things like wandering the galaxy, looks amazing. Now, when I first started playing the game, I went to one system I forgot what it was called, and it's right next to a fucking black hole. Like you can literally, you you can see it, and and I was just like, holy shit, this looks cool. Then again, I was like, holy shit, I can orbit this fucking black hole. And it was just, it's, a, it's an epic thing to, to see, and it's a visual, stunning thing. You know, there's a lot of moments in this game where you just stop and look at the visuals. And if you're like me, you take screenshots of it as well. The combat of this game is a combination of previous Mass Effect titles, but with more polish and with its own flair. You know, you get your booster pack, which works similar to Halo 5, where it just adds a new element to the game, gives you more verticality, you know, very more, more like dynamic movement. You know, it allows you to reach higher levels and do you know, things you wouldn't normally be able to do in a Mass Effect game. Now, as I said before, you can mix different power styles together in combat. This makes for unique combat styles and unique power combos. You know, using charge rooms when enemy and then finishing them off with Nova. You know, uh, using singularity and then using flat cannon. The gameplay can just go different depending on how your build is, and that's a good thing. You know, the gameplay is similar to Mass Effect 3, but a lot of different weapons with 
each race having their own new series of weapons from the Cat to Remnant and Nagara, and it's all pretty cool to use their weapons, and it's all pretty cool to just combo it with your different abilities and different builds. And with that, you can still change your build around throughout the game. So if you like, you know what, I don't want to be a biotic soldier, I want to be a soldier tech, you can just, in mid-game, you can just change around, you know, and build that. And there's a lot, a lot of armor to pick between, with, uh, with each arm piece having its own perks and buffs to them. There is a good amount of customization to armor in this game. That's why just a good amount of, of guns and the gunplay just works flawlessly and it's, 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 it's great. And Dramata's story is pretty interesting. It's immersive, but not as immersive as, as previous Mass Effect titles. There are some really fun moments and some moments that could have been better. Majority, if not all, of the Louis missions are, are great, especially Liam's. Now, Liam had a really great Louis mission, a happy responding a little bit, had me a little, little laughs, and it's kind of weird because beforehand, I didn't like Liam, I thought he was a, a shit character, but his voice mission made me think of him a different way, I started to like his character a bit more, and there's some good twists and good, you know, pieces of lore, that makes you start going, wait, what? So, that's, wait, what? No, I, I wonder, etc, 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 it makes you question things, makes you think of things, and you start speculating, and you start putting pieces together, there's a lot of things like that when you play this game, you get the story, it's a solid story that I won't say too much about because you guys have to experience it yourself, but it's well worth the experience. <laughs> Multiplayer is just like multiplayer from Mass Effect 3. It just doesn't have near as big of an impact on your story. As in, Mass Effect 3, you know, at first, multiplayer dictated a lot. As in, you know, you had to freaking play it to get 100% galactic readiness. You don't have to do it. That doesn't really mean anything anymore. You know, there's still like a minor thing when it comes to multiplayer or single player. Like, you get like crates from multiplayer that you can open in single player for your character. But outside of that, there's no actual impact for multiplayer on the single player. However, it's still a good, it's still worth playing. Multiplayer Andromeda is good. It's, it's a good break from the campaign. It's a good you know, time to just chill with friends and kill horrors of enemies because it is a horror mode multiplayer. For those uh, unaware of Mass Effect's multiplayer system, it's a horror mode, not a PvP kind of multiplayer. So don't go and thinking you're going to go against other players in this game. It's not that at all. But the servers run, run well. I only experienced lag once. Definitely a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer uh, game. And it's still it's, it's fun. It's still fun. It, it, it can get boring if you're just playing it non-stop. But it's good to you know just take a break from the campaign, play like a couple missions of, of the uh, multiplayer, and then get back into the campaign or play, play another game. Either way, it's all good. Overall, I think Mass Effect Andromeda is a good fresh start for Bioware, with expanding the, the Mass Effect universe beyond just Shepard, beyond the Reapers, beyond you know what we know of, of the game. Customization could be better, didn't have a, a buggy side quest where I had to defend against the ambush, but the ambush never showed up, so I had to reload my save. I did feel like some things were missing, but not so much to where I couldn't enjoy the game. I'd give Mass Effect Andromeda a 9 out of 10. I don't think it's better than the previous uh, Mass Effect games, but I do think it can stand alone by itself or stand beside them in comparison. You know, it is its own game. It's a great game, and I can't wait to see what's next, what's, what new areas we could explore, what new allies we can, you know, make in <clears throat> return of past allies from the Milky Way Galaxy. There's so much potential here, and, and I cannot wait to explore more of Andromeda. That's it for this review. I hope you all enjoyed it. Leave any thoughts you have in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. Peace out.